Welcome to Well Above the Rim. Well Above the Rim is a podcast that dives into the worlds of basketball, sports, and everything that revolves around them. Today we're sitting down with Gabriel Chachashvili. He's one of the most exciting young players in Israel, and we will talk about how someone that didn't pick up a basketball until the age of 15 ends up playing with the Israeli national team and winning the European Championship alongside now NBA and EuroLeague players. We will find out about how he overcame an almost career-ending injury and how his life has changed since he became a pro. Gabriel is currently averaging 9 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists on 65% from the line and 68% from the field for Hapoel Galile Lyon in the second league of Israel as they are heading to the playoffs and looking for a spot in the first league. He's a 6'11 big man with a guard skill set and he likes to be called Chacha. How are you my friend? Hey, what's up man? Man, I'm so excited to have you here. Got tons of questions for you. So now that the season is pretty much over and the playoffs are right around the corner, how do you feel about the season overall and what are your feelings for the playoffs? Well, it's 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 new. It's a different situation for me. You know, since the injury, that's the first season I got. And with our entire lockdown and COVID and everything, like fucking up the rhythm of practicing, of playing. Um, it's it's been really interesting. It's been really different, but we're starting to pick up the pace. Like uh, right now, the the last lockdown was a few months ago, so we got we got some time, like fluent time, to get in rhythm and shape. I'm feeling good, man. My body is good. Mentally, I'm feeling better. The team's working out. Like the team's getting along pretty well. We have like eight more games until the playoffs, and it looks like we're getting better by the day. Really. Uh, we're in a pretty good position. We're going to have the home court advantage at least for the quarterfinals. And, um, you know, we added a new guy uh, last game, before last game. He's been pretty good last game. Like, he's a good he's a good fit. He's a good addition to the playoffs. We have a solid team, bro, really. Like, we have vets. We have young guys who are really willing to run the court. We have good guards, good base. Like, it's, it's going to take, like, I, I'd say – two, three more games uh, just for us to like really click. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive about the playoffs. Like I'm feeling like we can really go all the way. We have a good team. Man, that's so exciting to hear. I'm going to be tuned in for the playoffs and hopefully you guys can get it done, man. Advance the league, get that championship. Good news. Um, you mentioned about your injury. Could you please run me down to what happened exactly? Because I know it was a pretty tough injury to get through. And um, yeah, tell me where it happened, what happened exactly, pretty much the whole rundown. Yeah, um, well, first first things first, um, I got injured in a practice game with a national team uh, in Bulgaria. And like the, the, it just happened off a, off a rebound and someone just pushed me lightly and it was an awkward angle. Like the landing was awful. And then the, the knee, like the kneecap just popped. It was outside. It was like, like the, one of those gruesome ones. And I was like, the adrenaline rush, you know, fear and everything, it got me. And I was so scared. I was screaming for my life. And uh, the physiotherapist actually popped it back in, like did all those, I don't know, like tapings or whatever he could. And anyway, they just sent me to the ER. Uh, and then MRI, and then, you know, they tell you, you got your ACL, your meniscus, your everything. And it's like, okay, so what do I do now? And they tell me off the bat, you're going to be ready for <laughs> exactly right. And they tell me off the bat, they tell me, you're going to be, you're going to have to be ready mentally for a whole year that you're not going to play that you're going to have to rehab to recover. And I don't, I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, uh, I, it's stuff that make a grown man cry. I cried, I cried my ass off. And now, now I'm just happy. I'm past it. Man, that's a tough situation. I can't imagine how hard it must have been. So please run me down about the whole process. And, uh, what did you do from there? So what does Gabriel Chachashvili think at that moment? And what was the whole process of recovery like? Uh, well, the first thing I did was accept it, accept that it's going to be a whole year and it's going to be tough. And the second thing I did was, uh, look up the best doctor, uh, look up the best, uh, physiotherapist I can uh, work with, uh, look up the, get the best, um, uh, trainer that I can like proceed, uh, to go on the court and uh, work, like just work with the best really. And I'm, I'm glad I did. I made the right choices for me. Like the doctor did a really good job. Uh, the surgery went very well. 
And then the physiotherapist who I'm like, I really appreciate him. We went like, we've been together three, four times a uh, week uh, for six months. Like the, we started, started off basic, you know, just like trying to get the, the range of motion for the knee and, uh, and uh, just trying to get that a little like uh, thickness on the, on the muscles around it. Uh, just, just so I can like carry myself and walk. And then the second part was normalizing a walk and uh, uh, managing to observe uh, the landing uh, like impacts just slowly with a trampoline, nothing crazy, but like, it's, it's just a whole crazy process. And then after that, you learn how to run back again. You learn how to jump again. You learn how to stay on one foot. Like he's, he just basically, it's like a big, big ass baby. And I learned how to do shit again. Like that's what it was. <laughs> Sounds like a whole process, man. Uh, can't imagine it must have been hard, but uh, how hard was it to just stay up the court and, and realize the state that you are right now that you have to go through the whole process of recovery um, while well, respecting the times, respecting the physio and pretty much learning how to walk, basically, man? <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, the, the whole like talking to myself thing was very hard, but it was a daily struggle. Like it's not a one time thing. It's not a one time, uh, one time thing where you just tell yourself and you're like, you're cool. Every day you got to remind yourself that it's going to take more time and it's going to take more effort, but it's okay. Cause you're going to get back there. Like there's no, no question about that. I didn't doubt it for a second. Chacha, you look bigger, you look stronger. Has your uh, workout regimen changed or your nutrition changed since you joined this new team or, uh, well, since the injury? Yeah. Um, well, uh, this actually goes to the rehab, back to the rehab, uh, during the rehab, I had a lot of time since there was no team practices and games. I had a lot of times to get in, uh, to get in the gym. So I ate better. Obviously I, I took out or I, uh, burned less calories and then I worked more in the gym. So as a result, I gained a bunch of pounds and I got stronger, uh, in all the places that I was lacking, like upper body, uh, core and everything like that and um and then this season the regimen changed a little bit yeah it changed a little bit because of the injury i was trying to uh to work uh smarter so i was i would work less on the court but it would be a little bit more intense so i would work 40 minutes not an hour but i'd be uh in a, in a, at a higher pace which uh it's something that, that my trainer the one i work with told me to do and on top of that, the diet, obviously, uh, you got to see a nutritionist, like you're trying to be a pro. Uh, and if you want to be a pro, you got to act like one. So you got to get a nutritionist. You got to talk to her. You got to get your diet right, your daily routine, food wise, uh, practices wise, everything, everything. Yeah, everything's important, bro. What does it mean to be a pro basketball player then? Now that you mentioned it, you have to act like a pro and eat like a pro. What What's it like to be a pro? Um, well, what does it mean to be a pro basketball player? Well, I think first of all is acknowledging that it's, uh, it's beyond, uh, love or passion for the, for the game. It's also, uh, it's just like work. It's basically work. You gotta, you gotta practice every day. You gotta make sure you get the right amount of sleep. Uh, you gotta make sure you eat the right things for your body, for your development. You gotta make sure you work in the right way in the right amount. Uh, there's a lot of things you have to worry about, and it's basically work with all the love to the game. And at the end of the day, you play for 40 minutes max, uh, maybe once a week, maybe twice, and you enjoy it. But there's a lot of work behind uh, the games itself, and that's and taking care of that work and managing it well uh, is really a big part of being a pro. And I'd say one more thing about being a pro is is uh, knowing how to handle success and how to handle uh tough situations but if you don't play a lot how to handle that makes you a pro uh when you get 20 and uh, 10 and everyone's saying you're the best thing uh in your country and how you handle that is also about being a pro so those two things they're really important well i assume that being a pro not only means being able to handle success but also being able to handle failure and uh, well it's pretty interesting to me to know how athletes uh, handle fla failure and well, this leads me to my next question. How do you bounce back from a tough loss or how do you, how do you manage failure? Um, well, I think, I think bouncing back from one bad game is uh, not necessarily difficult because, uh, you know, you still trust yourself and, uh, 
Um, I like to think that even though I had a one bad game, I still I still know my worth and I still know that uh, the next game is going to be different. And uh, you just have to you just have to look at film. The one part that's difficult about uh, a bad game is that you don't want to watch yourself playing that game. And you still have like you have a lot to learn in that specific game and you still have to watch all the film. You still have to talk to the coaches uh, and see what's wrong, what happened. Um, maybe you got to ask yourself what I didn't work out uh, in your warm up or the preparation to the game. Uh, and those things are really important that that's how you like develop the routine, that the stuff that works specifically for you for the games. But uh, mm -hmm. bouncing back from one game, really, I think it's just all about like staying in that mentality of it's cool. Like that happens. MJ had bad games. Uh, Kobe had bad games. Like you just got to go out there next game and you got to prove best it. Of that them. You, exactly. And you just got to prove that next game that you're, you're still here. Like you're still a top dog. Absolutely, man. You're still here. And, um, yeah, not every athlete can say that. And, uh, well, most of it has to do with confidence. And I would say that, uh, seeing you play and seeing you handle yourself, like on the court, you're a pretty confident guy. And I want to know where the, where does an athlete draw confidence from? What makes you confident as an athlete? What makes you believe in what you, in what you've, uh, trained so hard for? What, what, where does your confidence come from? Yeah. Um, shit, that's a good question. I mean, confidence, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm pretty confident. I wouldn't say I'm like, like one of the com most confident guys I've ever met, but I know, I know, I know what I can and what I can't do in life and in basketball. But I think confidence just really comes from hours of, of, uh, practicing of, of hours of picking up a ball or hours of, you know, like life experience. I don't know. I don't know really, but It's, it's funny. It's a good question, bro. I really got to think about that. But um, at the end of the day, like if we're talking basketball, I mean, I have full confidence in what I do and what I can control. So that translates just to, you know, if even if I don't get the ball, like I'm 210, I'm, I'm, I'm athletic, I'm strong. Like the things I can control always is always defense, always intensity, always going for the rebound, always setting up good screens. Like, Those are the things I control. And then my mentality uh, back in GBA, if you do, if you remember, they were trying to teach me that. And I really didn't understand because I wanted to shoot threes. I wanted to be the guy with the ball. I wanted to do all the highlight thing. But at the end of the day, it was going to make me money. And I started to realize that this season, uh, thanks to my uh, vet teammates who really helped me with that, like the mentality changed and shifted to, okay, I want to get the ball. I know I can do great stuff with it, but the basic of everything got to be that killer defense, that going for the rebound every time. Like last game, the game yesterday, uh, we were like going back and forth, two points for them, two points for us last quarter. And I made five points and, and a bunch of like rebounds, just like I got the team back from nothing, basically. I think I did, it's, it's nothing that has to do with skill. It's just like going for the rebound. It's that's nothing but hustle, you know? And those little things, they really win games and they're really going to pay you. They're going to pay you big. And I'm starting to realize that now. That's what's giving me confidence. Because imagine if you're in a game and you're doing so many little things, like you're getting a rebound, you're blocking a shot, you get a stop, you set a good screen for a teammate for an open three. And then you get the ball, you feel confidence from those plays. And then you can like, I don't know, cross, like step back or whatever, whatever it is that you're doing with your game. You feel me? So just the little things that give you confidence for me, man. That's really it. Well, I also feel that even pretty confident people can go through stages of doubt. And well, I wanted to ask you, are they days where you just feel like, well, maybe you're not good enough. Maybe you're not able, you're not going to be able to take the next step or you're not going to be able to advance in, in uh, basketball at all. And you're not going to be able to make it. Are they, are there days like that for you? Um, well, Well, yeah, I mean, as a person, you know, not just basketball, I think everyone doubts himself at certain points. Um, to me, I think, yeah, it happens sometimes. Sometimes uh, maybe after a bad game, the first thought that popped to my head is like, ah, shit, I'm not good enough. Uh, that's natural. I think that's just human. Like, that's human nature. Um, but they, they fade away pretty quick. Like, I don't remember the last time I thought that way, uh, to be honest. And uh, uh, I do remember that's thinking. That's a talent. Yeah, I don't know if it's a talent. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe it is a talent, but I remember thinking it at certain points and 
and yeah, and it just fades away because it like you keep practicing, you keep working hard, you do the same thing. You work on the same things. That's that's how you develop the confidence. Just reps. Like they say, greats have short-term memory. Man, they they just don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, man, you don't need really to remember anything besides what happened today. Like, really, <laughs> all the other just don't matter. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I like that attitude a lot. Don't worry about anything. Which makes me very curious because if I'm correct, you were committed for uh, the Florida Gulf Coast University, which is a division one in the US. And well, you couldn't go because of a setback. And well, how did you deal with that? And what happened exactly? Well, I mean, first things first, I committed and then uh, the military told me I cannot go. So it kind of it's kind of like no matter what happens, it's just something that I cannot control. I was bummed at first, yeah, and I had to tell them like that I couldn't come because of military and everything. But at the end of the day, like after a few days, I, you know, it's something that I really can't can't control at all. So I try not to focus on it. I was, I was trying to just to work with the national team at the time before I got injured and uh, started looking at team in Israel for the next season before I got injured, obviously. Yeah, but. I imagine it must have been hard to deal with this whole situation. And well, it, let, it ended up pretty well. You're playing for this good team and you're playing good minutes and you're playing well. So now I want to change a little bit of the focus of the conversation and ask you, how do you prepare before a game, both mentally and physically? Yeah, um, I used to, uh, to weigh in more, uh, to give more importance for the physical part. Uh, to sleep enough, uh, to eat the right things, and uh, etc. But I, I've I've uh, recently discovered that um, uh, the mental part, for me at least, maybe I don't know if it's for everyone, is a lot more important. And uh, I like to uh, uh, to get out of my comfort zone in a way uh, before the game, the day of the game, uh, which means uh, I might uh, try to deliberately uh, feel a little bit tired before the game. Or I'm, I might eat just a little bit less than what I'm used to, just to just to like uh, get me out of that comfort zone to feel something bad uh, of uh, physically, and then that makes me mentally like uh, focused. I guess that's what I've noticed because all the, like, the best games I had this season were games where uh, something hurt, or I wasn't eating enough that day, or I was tired. I, like I didn't get that uh, rest. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me, but that's that's how I approach I approach the games recently. I don't know about you, man, but that sounds a little bit self-destructive. But if it works, it works, right? <laughs> exactly. That's what I've been told that by so many people. <laughs> but uh, if it works, it works. You're right. <laughs> Everyone works differently, man. If it works for you, it works for you, and that's fine. Uh, but now I want to ask you, is there something that you look up in the beginning of a game, for example, from, from players that, uh, well, you look at some tendencies that they have, or uh, is there something that you do every single game that you know that works and that you're trying to emulate all the time? Uh, do you mean something that I'm trying to do or something that I'm trying to look for in other players? Both. Uh, yeah, well, the, the, the stuff that I'm trying to do every game is always rebound, always uh, defend, always uh, be vocal always be present, you know, just make sure every possession counts, like always be intense. And uh, the, the things that I'm trying to look for in other players, especially the players I play against is uh, uh, tendencies. A um, uh, big part is also is uh, sometimes I'm asking myself, can I trust talk this dude or not? Like, is it going to work for me? Because some people, when you trust talk them, they, they sag off, you know, they, their game like gets uh, shaky. And other players, when you start trash talking them, they go crazy. Like I wouldn't trash talk Siegel because I don't know he's about to light up and bust me. <laughs> you feel me? So, so that's just something I'm trying to figure out every time um, during the game as well. Um, that's mainly it. Now that you mentioned other players, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, what is it that you feel is it that sets you apart from other players uh, on the court? that may play your position or players that don't play your position like Sigur or other guards? What do you feel is it that sets you apart and makes you different? Um, well, I think that m most of the time I'm a little bit taller than people in my position, at least for this league and the league that I see uh, above. Uh, a little bit taller, um, a little bit more athletic than most bigs. Uh, I can move pretty well. I'm running the floor, I'm setting, like I'm really trying to set good screens and 
and all those things they're cool but i think the biggest uh the biggest uh difference is that i'm playing at a different pace like sometimes i get into it and i'm i'm so intense like i'm running up and down transition like we don't play sets when i'm on the court we play transition i set good screens i roll all the way i'm playing i'm getting the ball i know how to pass i know how to pass it to the open open dude if they switch on pick and roll and that really changes it cuz as a big it's pretty hard for a dude that's 26 to run up and down fight for the rebound and then play the flat or the show every like uh two or three times in 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 a minute and for me it's a little bit easier which which is just gives a big advantage to the team i don't really have to touch the ball but the the intensity i bring to the court just changes everything i think it's pretty interesting that you guys don't run any sets when you're on the court and well i think that says a lot about the type of relationship you have with your teammates and your coach so please talk to me about the type of trust you have with those people with the type of trust you have with your coach and the trust he gives you and well the trust your teammates give you yeah um uh, it's not that we don't really run any sets we do run sets obviously uh it's just that uh we're a fast paced team especially when i'm on the court uh and then uh the other bigs bigs on other teams are often slower and uh we just take that advantage of how fast we are we have very fast guards very fast bigs and we just really take advantage of that so we just run transition a lot a lot when i'm on the court and the trust is just that you know after a few games you develop the habits you see what's working more what's working less uh the coaches that too uh the teammates acknowledge it and then you just kind of i went up to my point guards and i was like uh his name's k and uh, omer i'm like k omer when i'm when i'm on the court let's run let's just run transition nobody can stop it you're going to get shots i'm going to get shots the 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 guard in the corner is going to get shots everyone's going to be happy and and we tried it and that worked and then the co- uh, coach said we've got to run faster it's like everyone acknowledging it it's if something works you're going to see it and you're going to try and do more take advantage of that more and more and that's that's the advantage we have as a team to me that sounds just like a winning formula man and I feel like the level of trust your teammates have on you and your coach has to do a lot with your skill set and your ability to dribble the ball and handle it. And for a man your size, that is quite impressive. So uh, tell me, what is it that you work on during practices to enhance that skill set that you have? Yeah, I've been working on the dribble. Obviously, uh, it's a part of my game. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, imagine a, a dude that's my height, but it, he can run the floor or f- run the fast break and and not necessarily not, not necessarily finish but pass it or get by someone like that's pretty unique and it gives you a big advantage and uh yeah like those two games which you talked about with the highlights like I did some of that I drove I got good passes I got some layups it was really fun for me and yeah I've been working on it I really tried to uh to improve my ball handling Nothing crazy, like I don't want to be no Kyrie, but you know, a simple, simple uh, cross or between the legs is enough in my size. For some reason, everyone that plays soccer that transitions to basketball ends up having really nice footwork and well, of course, you know, exception. And I think it's really interesting for me to know why is it that you transition from soccer to basketball and I just want to know your whole backstory man the playing for a team I know that you play for a national team and yeah pretty much the whole story um well I don't know man I started playing soccer because everyone's playing soccer in Israel that's like the main uh sport and basketball is only secondary so maybe it took me some time uh, to run into the right crowd you know a few friends maybe picked up a basketball and I tried it and I liked it And I remember watching Tim Duncan, like all of a sudden, I just like, I just saw Tim Duncan on YouTube and the Spurs. I started watching their clips and I was like, damn, this, that's cool. Like I gotta, I want to try that. And I started like picking up basketball, uh, on, uh, on the summer when there was no soccer and I liked it. And the more I liked it, the more I thought about joining a team and starting like to play basketball. And at the end of the day, I don't know, like nine, 10th, 10th grade, I just decided I'm going to go for it. And, you know, and I played for the uh, fourth uh, ranked league, like the lowest league you can possibly play in at that age. And we were we was practicing twice a week and then one game or once a week and then one game. I don't remember. Uh, 10th grade was pretty much the same, same league, same level. And then 11th grade, uh, the first half I played at the same level. 
And uh, the second half of the season, I went, I transferred to a team that's close to me who played for the first league. Uh, we did, they were one of the six teams who made it to the, uh, sorry, eight teams who made it to the quarterfinals. Like they were, they were very good. And it was crazy for me, like the difference in level in size and in, in everything, in the athleticism, in the, in the strength, it was crazy, but I adapted sort of quick. Like I was okay. I was getting like 15 minutes, you know? Uh, and then the season after that for the same team, I was like the, the main big, the, the main, like the main guy. And uh, we we managed to uh, actually beat Denny and Maccabi uh, at the finals. And when I was, I think I was 17 at the time, uh, we took the cup and we did uh, semifinals against Yam, where uh, we lost to him. Uh, it was a pretty good season, like for the whole team, like for the whole club. It was a uh, it was history made. But um, that season, I went like in the summer after the season ended. That's the season where we took the European Championship. And uh, after the European Championship, I decided to go to GBA. And as you, as you obviously know, GBA, crazy ride, bro. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we 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 uh, we managed to go into the playoffs at the end from the eighth seed and beat the, the first team, and then lose by two points to the team that was last place from the first league. Which, which was, it was horrible, but we were so close, like 19 year olds. And we were so close to beat those old ass men. Tell me about that, that whole experience of playing with the national team and well, playing with now NBA player, Danny Avdia and Euroleague player, Jovel Sussman. What was it like? Um, did you learn anything from them? And actually, do you feel there's a lot of difference between you and those players? Have I learned from them? Yeah, I have. I, I've learned a lot from Zussman that year. I've learned from Denny as well. Um, they were both great guys, like on and off the court. Uh, Zussman was back then, he was the leader because Denny was a little bit younger, but Denny obviously had a big ass role. Um, and, um, um, well, do I see myself far away from them? I'm be, I'm be honest, like, no, I don't think I should because I want to be at that level. So obviously, I got to feel like I'm good enough for that. Um, yeah, there's very, obviously, there's, Things that are better. There's things that I bring to the court. It's a little bit uh, difference in uh, in uh, in position, size, game styles, everything. But I definitely see myself like fitting, fitting that that level. Nah, I don't think so either. Plus, you've already shared the floor with those players, so I think it's easier for someone to say, "Well, you know what? I already I already played with those guys, so the difference between them and me doesn't have to be that big." And well, I think it's pretty a pretty amazing story, in my opinion. And I'm gonna put you on the spotlight and just ask you, what is it? What was your favorite your favorite memory of winning in basketball? What what was it? The uh, first cup against Danny? Was it uh, the European Championship? Was it the men's one with uh, GBA in Czech Republic? Which one was it? Uh, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. The first the 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 one that like takes me back and brings me the most like emotions is the the cup against uh, Denny but not not because it was Denny like he was he was just you know he was a great player but he wasn't an NBA player at the time uh it was just crazy because because I was the main guy and it was it was that much more important when you're the dude that has the ball in the last minute and like taking the 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 decision and like, stuff like that so it, it really, it really felt that much more important and that much more exciting for me winning that. And it was the first cup that I like, the first trophy I got, uh, especially as the main guy. Um, and after that, I say the you know the European Championship was crazy too, because like no one expected us to win it, like really no one. Uh, we didn't like we had really good players, but but we weren't like a team that people feared like that we had they had Serbia they had Spain uh Croatia uh Germany was crazy too like uh Spain I said I said Spain already uh France was crazy too like all those teams and we just bid them up like 20 by 20 by 30 it was crazy even the finals were like we won by 18 you feel me and and it was really crazy like the way the team played 
that was like, we really dominated. That's the word we dominated. That was crazy. Like I've never seen anything like that. And obviously I was just glad to be a part of it. Like get my 15, 20 minutes, like try to help the team, whatever way I can. It was, it was just crazy. And, and yeah, last, last is GBA because at the end we didn't really go up a league. So it doesn't actually count. But we still got a trophy. It was nice. <laughs> but it was a crazy run, bro. Like, back then, too, like, we didn't even talk about going to the playoffs. We didn't even talk about those things. Like, we were just talking about improving ourselves and as a team, like, trying to get better with everything in basketball. And then all of a sudden, we go to the playoffs and, like, we make a crazy run. And we're, like, two points away from going up a league, a bunch of 19-year-olds. Like, and that's just... That's unbelievable, bro. That's really unbelievable. And to this day, I'm, I'm just, I'm fucking sad. Like, I'm fucking mad that I, I didn't do more, you know, to win that last game. Like, that still weighs on me. You got unfinished business. I got unfinished business, man. Uh, are we gonna, we're going to go up. I feel like we're going to go up. I'm pretty positive. I know, I know damn well we're going to do everything we can. That's for sure. Well, I'm sure I'm going to be rooting for y'all, dog. And, uh, well, if you guys are prepared, if you tell me you're going to do everything you, in your power, then that's all you can ask from a team. And now, well, let's move a little bit from those tough questions and to something more lighthearted. What is it that you listen to when, like, before practice or during practice or, like, you, you know, to get in the mood? Um, I try to listen to some heavy, like, more gangster stuff if that makes sense like schoolboy q or 21 savage just stuff that like pumps me up and makes me want to get like aggressive get me in an aggressive mood all right uh what are the shoes that you're wearing lately and what are your favorite shoes to wear favorite brand uh favorite shoes i like the ones i have now like i like adidas more than nike basically everything is adidas like i love the soles they're very comfortable the shoes to wear i got i got ones that are called um adidas marquee boost They're really good. And uh, I also have hardened fours, which are very comfortable. Like, I like the, both those pairs. I really enjoy them. Tell me about the players that you try to imitate, like players that inspire you, you know, uh, from the NBA or maybe the EuroLeague. Um, well, I don't really watch a lot of EuroLeague. I should probably watch more of it. Um, For real? I should probably do. But um, I'm, I really like Bam Adebayo. I really like the way Bam plays. He's, like, very aggressive, very intense. He's always, like, getting the hustle balls. He's always getting rebounds. He's always dunking everything. Like, I like the way he plays. Are you saying Bama de Bayo because you're watching the Miami Heat get a play right now? <laughs> <laughs> As I'm watching him, like, this dude is everywhere, bro. He's blocking everything. He's getting every rebound. Like, that's crazy. He's a, he's a dog. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's the type of player every team needs. That's really, he's really good, man. I really like him. For real. Last but not least, man. What are your plans for the future? NBA draft, EuroLeague? Just tell me about it, man. What are your plans for the next five years? <laughs> A good old question, bro. Everyone loves to ask that. Um, five years, I, I want to say NBA and EuroLeague, but I'm, I'm really thinking next, like this year and next year before I'm thinking five years. Like that's the answer I always give because it's true. Well, thank you for telling the truth, Chacha. And this was pretty much it. Thank you a lot for popping by, dog. It was a blessing. Um, Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I sure did. <laughs> Thank you a lot, man. And um, yeah, let me wrap things up and hopefully see you next time. Hey, thanks, Nico. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, kids. It's, it's, a, it's a real fun talking with you. This was Well Above the Rim. I'm your host, Nico Montoya. Thank you for popping by, Chachi. It was a lot of fun. Follow the podcast on Instagram at WellAboveTheRim. Don't forget to subscribe and rate the podcast. See you next time.